Kate Smith made very popular, if any of you remember Kate Smith. English. And um, so I have to play this one, uh, which we, we borrowed from the English. with the memory. Um, I'd like to perform the service hymns. Uh, I hope I got the Coast Guard one right because I just heard a version of it. But uh, this, this is the version I know. So uh, if, uh, if you were in the Coast Guard, this one's for you. members for your service. Navy. Thank you, service members, for your service. Thank you, Christopher. Really appreciate that. Bet you haven't heard all those hymns done on a violin before, have you? That was definitely different and a nice way to start the program. 
Um, for those of you that have not met me before, my name is Pat Pothier, and I get to be the Master of Ceremonies today. U.S. Army 73 to 76 was assigned to a field artillery battalion, and to celebrate Veterans Day is a real honor for me, so I appreciate you guys inviting me back to do so. Just a couple of quick facts about Veterans Day. You probably all know that it used to be called Armistice Day. It was actually signed in June of 1919 to signify the end of World War I. Uh, some folks up in Congress quickly determined, even though it was June 1919, fighting had actually stopped between the two um, combatants back in November 11th. So they actually moved it back to November 11th, 1918. Now, in Congress, 20 years later, they actually declared it a federal holiday. It took them 20 years to get to that. Unfortunately, like a lot of our holidays, it got moved around. Uh, you'll recall that they took a lot of holidays and had them being celebrated on a Monday closest to the date. Well, in 1975, President Ford said, no, that's not good enough, and he actually asked that it be celebrated on November 11th every year. So thank you, President Ford. And by the way, it actually got its name changed from Armistice Day to Veterans Day in June 1954. Uh, when a bunch of veterans went to Congress and said, we know that you did this in honor of World War I, but since then we've had World War II and we've had Korea. We'd like to have the name change to Veterans Day. And that happened on June 1st, 1954. So thank you for that. Any veterans out there, raise your hands. Got a bunch of them. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. Family of veterans, I also want to thank you for your service. Uh, one of the things that I do in my daytime job is I provide a lot of PTSD um, trauma uh, therapy. And one of the things I've noticed is that it is not just the veteran suffering. And many times it's the family and those closest to them as well. So for the families that are here of veterans, I want to thank you for your service as well. So thank you very much. Any Marines? I don't see any hands. Oh, one way, way in the back. All right, belated birthday. Marine Corps birthday was yesterday, so happy birthday to those Marines that are here today. All right, so let's get on with this. Let's have the posting of the colors. Doing that is going to be Doogie Schlesinger and Paul Timbrick. Thank you, gentlemen. If I could get you to stand, please. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. If you can put your, heart, your, hand, your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. And now to sing the national anthem, Chante Kettles. So proudly we 
that done any better? I know I haven't, and I've been to three programs today. This is my fourth. Man, she just knocked it out of the park. Beautiful young lady, beautiful voice. She did a great, great job. All right, so now I would be introducing Dave Pressey to do our invocation, who is our chaplain. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to keep him in your hearts and in your prayers. Dave Pressey came down with COVID-19, as did the rest of his family. So he is at home resting. And so if you can keep him in your prayers as he goes through this. And then also keep in your, your prayers Dan Lopez, who is the commander. Uh, he had a heart attack recently and just underwent uh, bypass surgery. So if you can keep those two gentlemen in your prayers uh, as we go forward. So I am actually going to do the invocation for Dave, and hopefully I can do it as well as he would have done. Okay, Great Spirit, we take this November 11th to celebrate and honor those brave men and women who at one time in their life offered their life in service of this great nation. Great Spirit, please allow all veterans and their families today to feel honored. Let every veteran of our nation's armed forces feel truly and appropriately honored by the attention and appreciation of their fellow citizens. Let no one feel forgotten or neglected. Let every man and woman, young or old, feel the deep and enduring gratitude of our nation and its inhabitants. To be understood, it can be difficult for a person who has returned from battle or stressful military service to reintegrate into normal everyday life. You know that the veterans can feel isolated and alone even in the midst of their friends and families because there are few around them who truly understand their experiences. So we ask you to place in the path of our veterans those who do understand that they may feel less alone. Remind them often that while their fellow human beings may never fully comprehend, they do see, they do know, and they do identify with them in everything they do. To be healed, only you know how deep a warrior's wounds go. You know the loss of many of our veterans in body and soul. You know the memories that haunt them and the scars that many of them continue to carry today. Please bring the healing to all veterans who still hurt. Please grant them patience and wisdom to those around them who cannot understand but can sometimes help the overall healing process. Please apply both natural and supernatural medicine to their wounds. And finally, to be rewarded, please turn your gaze to those men and women who in their military service have sacrificed time, comfort, strength, ambition, health, and prosperity for the peace and safety of family and friends and all others who they may never know. Please reward them a hundredfold for all their sacrifice and their service. Bless them far beyond their expectations. Reward them richly for all that they have given. In your name, amen. And now to follow that up, I want to introduce Amanda Bellinger, who is going to give us the prayer.
get to hear from her, her again later on in the program. So thank you so much, Amanda. Appreciate that. Now, to sing America the Beautiful, nope, nope, God bless America, Brooks Hope. I just like to say before I start. Oh, never mind. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I worked for all my life, and I had to start again with just my children and my wife. Thank my lucky stars to be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died And gave that right to me Gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to LA Where there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say An American, where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died and gave that right to me I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died And gave that right to me Cause I gladly stand up Next to you and defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the you Thank you. 
wanted to say something. Yeah, before sorry. You got singing, so. <laughs> I should have said this before, but I just like to dedicate these songs I sing today just to all veterans and to my grandfather, uh, Walter McClelland, who served uh, as a navigator aboard the USS Hood in World War II. So thank you for your service. Thank you, Brooks. I wanted to make sure you got those comments in. Thank you so much. All right, ready for Shantae to come back? Yeah, she's gonna sing America the Beautiful. Shantae Kettles. I guess I can talk before. Um, so I'd like to to all the veterans and to my cousin who served in the military and, um, and to my great grandfathers who served in the Navy. So um, I just want to thank everyone who has served in all of the branches. Um, 
for protecting our country and for letting us be free and for letting us have this amazing Ojai, an amazing country, an amazing life that we all live today. So thank you. Okay, I don't think you can say it any better than that. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. And I, I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Shanti? Shanti, thank you so much. Dad, I'm surprised you're not on the calendar here. What's going on? Okay, all right. All right, so before I introduce our first speaker, I just want to bring a couple of things to your attention. Up here in the back, we have the BFW 11461 along with the American Legion 482. If you go up there and see their tables, you'll actually see some of the things that we would wear uh, when we were in combat. You get to talk to them a little bit about it, and they'll be sharing information about the, how that's changed over the years. Also, right next to them is uh, the table. They have cookies for sale, ice cold water, and if you have not picked up a program that you can follow along, they have free programs up there as well. So you want to make yourselves available to go up there and get those. With that, I want to introduce our first of three veteran speakers. Our first speaker is going to be Perry Van Houten. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much. And uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming out for Ojai's Veterans Day activities here at Libby Park. I'm a writer for the Ojai Valley News, and I also write for our magazine, Ojai Magazine. Nancy Hill gave me an idea for a story that appears in the current issue of the magazine. Over that direction, there is a plaque, a bronze engraved plaque at the east entrance to Libby Park. Uh, this plaque lists the names of 20 American veterans from here in Ojai and the valley who gave their lives in the service of their country. You can see that plaque right over there at that corner of the park on the east end. Two of the men honored on that plaque died while prisoners of war in the Pacific Ocean Theater of World War II. So in the fall edition of the magazine, I had the honor of telling the stories of these men and those of other POWs who called the Ojai Valley home. Robert Pierpont, you may know the name Pierpont, famous local name, and Lewis Hayes, those are the two gentlemen listed on the plaque here at the park. Now both Pierpont and Hayes fought in the Philippines at Bataan and Corregidor. Both were captured and both were held in Japanese POW camps. Both amazingly survived the Bataan Death March, which I'm sure you've read about, but neither man survived the war. Pierpont in fact, was on his way to a work camp on, uh, on a ship, a Japanese troop ship. He was on his way to the Japanese mainland, and the ship was torpedoed and sunk. It had uh, no markings on it that it was carrying POWs, and we lost Robert Pierpont. Mr. Hayes passed away in a prison camp in the Philippines. He was buried at Manila American Cemetery, where more than 17,000 other American servicemen and women are buried. A third gentleman is John Rial. Now, John was another survivor of the Bataan Death March who grew up here in Ojai. He graduated from Nordoff High School, was sent to Clark Field in the Philippines, and during the battle, he went from being an aerial photographer with a squadron of B-17 bombers to being an inf infantryman armed with a 1903 Springfield rifle. Well, he was sent home after VJ Day, and Rial landed in Washington State, went to Redwood City, in Northern California and then hitchhiked home to Ojai and John lived to be 92. Now, research for the article captured is what it's called. It was based on the Wall of Remembrance which you see here at Libby Park at the tennis courts. It's a series of posters honoring more than 2,000 Ventura County veterans, most from the Ojai Valley. And the wall is here at Libby Park today for you to experience firsthand, and I recommend you do so. That wall was created by Nancy Hill, who I know a lot of you know, and Nancy each year organizes this event and just about every other event for veterans in the Ojai Valley, and it was also put together by historian and author David Pressey, who I'm sorry couldn't be here uh, today, but he is a great source of information on veterans. Um, according to uh, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, 130,000 Americans were captured and interned during World War II. More than 14,000 died as POWs, while over 116,000 returned to serve with the U.S. military. Now, in his book, Veteran Stories of Ventura County, 
David writes about another Pacific Theater POW. His name was Rene Dietz. Now, Dietz was a sailor in the Royal Dutch Navy. He was stationed on the island of Java. But after the fleet was wiped out in the Battle of the Java Sea, Dietz was captured and sent to, a Japanese, uh, to the Japanese mainland where he worked building enemy ships. Well, on April 9th, 1945, Mr. Dietz was high up in the mountains above the city of Nagasaki and witnessed and survived the second atomic blast, Rene Dietz. Now, after the war, Rene wound up here in Ojai where he raised his family in the middle of an orange orchard on Thatcher Road and he worked as an accountant at the Thatcher School. His children included Sousa Francina, who I'm sure a lot of you know, our Ojai City Council member. His eldest grandson is former Ojai representative to the State Assembly and current Santa Barbara County Supervisor, Doss Williams. According to military records, about 33% of American POWs held in the Japanese prison camps died in captivity, while only about 1% held by the Germans suffered the same fate. Japan had signed but never ratified the Geneva Convention, which Germany had ratified in 1934. Well, the wall of remembrance over here at the tennis courts tells the stories of three Americans who fought on the Western Front and all were captured. All three survived the war and ended up here in the Ojai Valley. Their names were Donald Betlock, Ben Leipzig, and Larry Moraga. Now, Don Betlock was captured in December of 1944 during the Battle of the Bulge. He spent four of his eight months overseas as a POW in Stalag 12A, located near Limburg, Germany. Ben Leipzig, people knew him as Benny. Benny grew up in what's now Casita Springs, but was then known as Stony Flats. He, he was a gunner in the B-17, which was shot down during his seventh bombing mission over France. Larry Moraga, our third uh, gentleman here, was a soldier with the 84th Infantry Division. He was captured and spent six months in a German forced labor camp. Now, Nancy, Nancy Hill, interviewed Don, Ben, and Larry as she was creating their posters for the Wall of Remembrance. And Nancy told me that all three men became friends after the war, but they never really got together to reminisce about the war. It was just something they experienced that they didn't want to relive, she said. But all three of these American heroes shared a common bond beyond their being POWs and coming to Ojai. After serving their country, all three men then served this community. They attended local churches. They donated money at fundraisers for veterans. Don Bedlock, who passed away last year at the age of 95, was deputy director of the County Public Works Department. He served on the Ojai Planning Commission as well. But they had another bond, another common bond beyond all that. Nancy told me the men didn't go to war because they loved to go to war. They went to war because they loved what they had left behind. Now, you can read about these men. Uh, this article is called Capture, the story of Ojai's World War II prisoners of war. It's in the current edition of Ojai Magazine, which is published by the Ojai Valley News. So please be sure to thank a veteran today for their service to this great country. Maybe wander over and take a look at the bronze plaque with the names of these fallen Ojai veterans and at the entrance to the park over there on the east end. And thank you, thank, thank you to all of you for supporting our Veterans Day activities here in Ojai. Thank you very much. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. <laughs> Pat? Uh, you can leave you out here all by yourself, huh? <laughs> Great job, Perry. Appreciate that. All right, so next up we have Darren Caldwell, and she'll be singing You'll Never Walk Alone. Welcome to the stage, Darren. That's my family. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It is such an honor and a privilege to be here today. Thank you for giving me the time to be up here to honor our veterans. And also, this song rings very true with the story that was just told. What an amazing story. Um, I would like to share this song with you. And it's called You'll Never Walk Alone. I'm sure you've heard it. It's from the musical Carousel. It's a song that's very near and dear to my heart. So, 
I'll do the best I can. When you walk through a storm, keep your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver sound of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. Thank you. Thank you, Darian. Thank you, Darian's family out there rooting for her. Great job. There we go. Thank you so much. All right. Up next is from a, uh, Amanda Ballinger, who I mispronounced the first time, is going to come out and now sing from a distance. Come to the stage, Amanda. Congratulations.
Montgomery.
put together a great program for you guys. All the way from Wayland to Shanti, to Darian, to Brooks, to Amanda. Um, you guys don't get the view I get. I get to see their parents and the smiles and the pride they have on their face. I got to watch dad over there in the hallway. I get to see mom and dad up here with Shanti. I tell you what, it's a perfect view. All right, so they're still gathering the kids for the uh, for the Monica Ross School, so, or Monica Rio School, so as soon as they do that, I will introduce them. But in the meantime, I want to introduce our second speaker, Steve Quilty, to be our second speaker. Steve, come on up. Oh, wait a minute. They're going to go first? They are going to go first. Never mind. Don't say I'm not flexible. We're going to go with the kids. All right, singing Fly, Fly, Fly in Veterans Day song, the singers from Monica Ross School.
the Acosta family. Father Manuel was in World War II in the Seabees, the Navy Construction Battalions. His sons Richard in the Navy in Korea, Alan in the Air Force in Korea, Ernie in the Air Force just after Korea, and Ernie met Richard after two years apart in Morocco. Their uncle Manuel Lopez was in World War II in the Army in Germany, and his son Marshall Lopez served in Vietnam in the Army. The Yanez family, Richard was in World War II in the Army in Germany, Robert in the Army in Korea, Ronald in the Army just after Korea, Rodney in the Army in Alaska, and Roland in Vietnam in the Army. Uh, this one really amazes me, the Heiser family. Bill was in World War II in the Navy in the Pacific, Ed was in World War II in the Navy, enlisted at the age of 15, tossed out when they found out how young he was, re-enlisted at 17, and later served in the Korean War in the Army Infantry, plus three tours in Vietnam. Dick was a Navy corpsman with the Marines in Korea and Vietnam. Family members in the Heiser family, starting with the Pennsylvania Militia in the Revolutionary War. Family members were in the Civil War with Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders in the Spanish-American War and with General Douglas MacArthur in World War I. The Studer family. Magnus Studer was a World War II Army medic in the South Pacific. Enlisted, then became an officer, retired after 20, went through college, taught school in Ojai at the junior high and at Nordoff High School for 25 years, retired in 87. His grandson, Timothy, was killed in action in Afghanistan. The Miles family, four brothers served between Korea and Vietnam. Tom in the Army, Larry in the Air Force, Bill in the Army, and Bobby in the Navy, supporting the Bay of Pigs. The Ford family, those of you that have been here a while may remember Boyd Ford, he was the state farm guy before Bob Daddy became the state farm guy. Boyd served in World War II in the Navy, in the South Pacific, small carriers. Brian, his youngest son, was in the Coast Guard and had several ship commands in the anti-drug running patrols, served 28 years as a captain in the Coast Guard and is here living in Ojai again and is a tennis coach and a substitute teacher. Ray Huckins, my late father-in-law, Ray Huckins Jr., I should say, was a World War II pharmacist mate in the South Pacific. His father, Ray Sr., was a World War I Army in, in the Army Engineering Battalions building railroads in France. And you'll hear more about Ray Jr. next session. And finally, my own family, my father, Lee, born in Italy, became a naturalized citizen in 38, served in World War II in the Army Air Force, was a, in the South Pacific. He was a bomber flight engineer and gunner and served in the same squadron as Tom Jamison. You'll hear more about Tom later. My father was shot down three times, once was the sole survivor of a crew of 10. My mother, Arlene, was also a veteran in the Army, in what they called the WAX, the Women's Army Corps, and served as a company clerk here stateside. And I served, I was in Korea in the uh, 8th Army Support Command in the Army, uh, in the Vietnam area, late 60s, early 70s, and my youngest brother, Scott, served in the 80s in the Army's 9th Infantry Division. I salute them all, living and dead. And again, we don't know them all, but we owe them all. Thank you.
All right, again, I want to say thank you to Steve. We want to salute him for his service. And I'll say here in the Ojai Valley, if you haven't had an opportunity, please do take an opportunity to walk around the tennis courts. They have the Wall of Remembrance up there. Uh, Ojai Valley is very rich in its history and its legacy of members um, providing service to the United States uh, military. Uh, one thing I'll share with you, did you know that only 5%, 5% of the total population ever puts on the uniform of the United States, 5%. And if you take an opportunity to walk around there, there's quite a few people up on that board. So thank them all. And thank you, Steve. All right, next I want to reintroduce uh, Waylon Tomei. She is going to sing Always Be Humble and Kind. Has anybody heard that song? It's a Tim McGraw song. It came out a couple years ago. And if you haven't heard it, I will ask you to please listen to the words very carefully. important messages in every line that she sang. Say please, say thank you. My favorite is though, as, as all of us do, we try to reach our goals. And there's a line in there that says, once you reach your goals, turn around and help the next guy too. So I just think that's such a phenomenal song and she did a great job with it. Another great job coming up. We're going to introduce, reintroduce Brooks Hope and he's going to sing for us, Danny Boy.
Wow, that was just beautiful. Good job, Brooks. Nice job. You should be proud of that one. Good job. All right, I want to reintroduce our next speaker, Steve Quillacy, who's going to come up for a second stance. Great. I would like to introduce you now to half a dozen amazing individuals, all military and all served after their military service, supporting the city, the valley, the country. And if, you, uh, if you're in the hashtag business, go find hashtag still, still serving. You'll find a lot of veterans, a lot of VFW folks. First, Robert J. Bob Lagermarsino, World War II Navy pharmacist mate, after college and law school, and a law practice here in the county, served on the Ojai City Council, and was mayor until he was elected to the California State Senate and later served 18 years representing Ojai and surrounding areas in the U.S. Congress. Bob died early this year. We forgot to get him onto that program list that you have on your back page showing Ojai veterans that we've lost in the last year. John F. Jack Fay. Jack was in World War II in the Army Air Force in Europe, 8th Air Force heaviest casualties of any Air Force unit, I think, in history. He was a B-24 heavy bomber navigator, and on one of his missions was one of two in a crew of 10 who survived being shot down. He parachuted to safety and was inducted into the Caterpillar Club. That's folks that have parachuted out of a shot down airplane. Jack went on to college and law school, he chaired the Ojai Planning Commission in the 50s. He was Ojai City Attorney in the 60s. He was Ojai on the Ojai City Council and served as mayor in the 70s and 80s. He was president of the Ojai Civic Association, the folks that own the post office and helped put together Libby Park. And he helped found AARP with a local lady here in Ojai. Jack also died early this year. My late father-in-law, Alva R. Ray Huckins. He was a World War II pharmacist mate, actually was in the reserves starting in 38. Two tours in the South Pacific in a mobile Navy hospital and a Navy medical research unit on New Caledonia. After college and medical school, he interned at Cottage Hospital in Santa Barbara and then settled here in Ojai and practiced medicine for 45 years before retiring in 1996. I know when I first came to Ojai, all I had to do to say was to introduce myself to people was say, I was Ray Huckins' son-in-law. Half the people I met said, oh, he's my doctor. Anyway, he was on the Ojai Planning Commission on the City Council, served as mayor in the 60s and 70s, and was a driving force behind the founding of the Ojai Hospital and was chief of staff there at one point. We lost him 10 years ago, and I miss him every day. Bob Ham. Bob was in World War II and Korea in the Air Force, after military service, still serving, was 25 years as the Ventura County Clerk. His son-in-law, Dick Booth, who served in Vietnam in the Navy on multiple ships in the Gulf of Tonkin, you may remember that phrase. Dick later practiced medicine here in Ojai for 10 years until his untimely death at the age of 40 from cancer. I mentioned earlier Tom Jameson, served in the same squadron as my father. Tom was a World War II Army Air Force pilot, heavy bomber pilot in the South Pacific, 
later served in the Federal Aviation Administration in the tower at LAX Airport. He retired to Ojai in the 70s, served as president of the Ojai Valley Municipal Advisory Council. That's people that are sort of like the planning commission for all of the Ojai Valley areas that are outside the city limits. He was on the board of directors of his local sanitary district before they all merged into the one that we know today. He was on the board of directors of the Ventura River County Water District. Tom volunteered with help of Ojai and the VFW. He was named an Ojai Living Treasure in 2012. He was a July 4th Parade Grand Marshal here in Ojai and he was always there to help sponsor events like Memorial Day, July 4th, and Veterans Day, and St. Thomas Aquinas Church activities. Tom died three years ago at age 97. And finally, I want to salute one of the folks that are under the tent at the back of the, at the, back of the area here. Harry Hunt. Harry was in the Korean War, U.S. Marine Corps Infantry. People have lots of jobs in the Marine Corps, but they're always infantrymen at heart. After serving on active duty, he spent 33 years in the California Highway Patrol, retiring as a lieutenant. He is now the VFW, the local VFW post 11464. 11461. He is our quartermaster. That means that he's the finance guy. And if you wonder how we pay for events like this, the income is from donations, the outgo, Harry writes all the checks. Harry's father, also Harry, served in the Army in World War I, infantry in France. After serving, he got into the oil field business and lost his right arm in an accident. In spite of that, Harry Sr. was appointed as Ojai's constable, roughly equivalent to chief of police these days. That was in the 30s and the 40s. Harry the Elder came across an escapee over in Steckel Park near Santa Paula, an escapee from what was then called an insane asylum, a hospital for the criminally insane. The escapee shot Harry first, but Sherry put, uh, Harry put four shots into the escapee who died. Harry was in the hospital, left the hospital and returned to work against doctor's orders, and a month later died from the after effects of his wounding by that escaped person. So some remarkable people that have lived here and that have served after their military service supporting this town, the county, and in the case of Bob Lar Mycino, even the, even the entire country. Finally, I'd like to thank the city of Ojai for supporting the VFW and putting on this event and waiving our fees for the rental of the bowl today. Thank you, city. Thank you again, Steve. We really appreciate it. Just another example of the legacy, the history of service that's right here in Ojai and its citizens. Great job. All right, I want to reintroduce Brooks. Brooks Hope's going to come out and sing another song for us. Brooks, I'm going to ask you to pronounce this song for me. Okay, buddy? Hi there. So this song is uh, Conte Partiro.
sono solo sogno orizzonte manca le parole si lo so che non c'è luce una stanza quando manca il sole se non ci sei tu con me con me su le finestre Mostra tu il mio cuore che hai acceso, chiudi dentro me la luce che hai incontrato per strada. That was really good. Thank you so much. Before I introduce the next speaker, Nancy Hill asked me to highlight uh, the voice coach, Asante Fleming. She's the one that actually helped all those little kids that you saw up on stage a little earlier. It wasn't part of the program, but while you were listening to Brooks, she ran over and said, please announce her name because she did such a wonderful job. And I think you guys agree, right? Those kids were awesome. Okay, I want to reintroduce Shante Kettle. She is going to sing Hallelujah for you. David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor falls and the major lifts, the baffled king composes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
faith was strong, but she needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew ya. So she tied you to her kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew the hallelujah. 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 Well, baby, I've been here before. I've seen this room and I've walked this floor. I used to live alone before I knew ya And it's not the flag on the marble arch It's nothing but you seen the light It's the cold and it's the broken Hallelujah 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 Maybe there's a God above, but all I've ever learned from love was how to shoot somebody who outdrew ya. And it's not somebody who cried at night, it's not somebody who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Happy Veterans Day. You know, I've been doing this for six years for Nancy, and every year I listen to her and I think she can't get any better. And the next year she gets even better. She's amazing. Thank you so much. All right, what I'd like to do is lead us in a moment of silence for all veterans, all veterans, all veterans' friends, all veterans' families that have endured this, especially the 23 that are listed on the back of your program. I understand from Nancy these are the 23 that we've lost since the last time we were able to get together and celebrate either Memorial Day or Veterans Day. So if we could just take a moment of silence. Thank you so much for that. I know the veterans and their families. Thank you for doing that. Now what I'd like to do is reintroduce Amanda Bollinger. She is going to sing Amazing Grace for us.
So if you, um, if you don't know Nancy Hill, please get to know her. She brought up such a great um, lineup for you this morning and this afternoon. Amanda, Waylon, um, Brooks, um, Shante, they were amazing singers. They just catch you right there in the heart. It was a great job by all of them. So now what I'd like to do is introduce my really good friend, Howard Hudson, who is going to play taps for us as we end the program. could get you to retire the colors, please. Thank you. That's going to bring to an end our program. I would just have, uh, I was asked on a radio show this morning, what are two things that we can do for veterans if we come across one? Two things you can do for a veteran is one, thank them for their service. And number two, if they start talking, listen to them because not a lot of people do. So thank you very much. I appreciate you all being here. I hope you had a great time, and have a great rest of the day.